Yeah, I bought two avocados and it, thought it was just gonna be just a little bit of guac. It looks like a lot. It's a ton. I don't know what, yeah. it was just, hey, welcome to B-Movie Mania. I'm Mike Hayes. And I'm Paul Brooks. Tonight on the show we have two very interesting movies, mm -hmm. Mike. Two very different movies. Two both, though. I feel the vision of the creator, the director, both writer director films, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's pet projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I think you're right. Definitely one of them. Yeah. Uh, our first movie. Where is it? Right on top. Yeah. Well, we'll put it there. Oh. <laughs> there you go. That's good. It's called Axum. It is a horror film. To say the least. To say the least. And um, I hate, I really, I don't, I don't like saying this, but honestly, where to begin? Yeah. Let's start with the logo. All right. Do you remember it? Like at the beginning, it's just, it's sort of right mm -hmm. there, yeah. Axum. Yeah. And that, to me, is a pretty clear indicator of what we're in for with this movie. Yeah, there's no title sequence. There's no setup. It doesn't even have like a beat where it comes in. It right. just is there. Yeah. It's it strikes me as a student film. Perhaps. I hundred. I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. But I 100% had that same feeling. There was a lot of stuff shot on a college campus. Yeah. And I kind of really got the feel that that was the case. What is this movie <laughs> about? Axum. It's a fairly simple plot. Yeah. It's very simple, actually. That's not the confusing part of this film. Right. It's... There's college students. They're gonna go out to a uh, house. No, we oh. can't. Do you got a problem with it? Yes, I do. And Michael, what did you really bring us up here for? Yo, rock man. Rock man. Should I tell? How much did you tell? Fuck her hands up. Yeah. 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 And there's a serial killer on the loose who may or may not be undead. So, full disclosure, we watched this movie mm -hmm. twice. Twice. We yeah. watched it, and then. And it's still sort of like being in some sort of lucid dream state where <laughs> yeah. it feels like you should understand what's going on, but mm -hmm. most of the time, you kind of don't. Check it out. I know some of you can go into your right? As soon as we finish doing this, we can go out the yard. What's the big problem with this movie? Can we say at the same time, count to three? Yeah. On on three. One, yeah. two, and then all right. One, two, three, sound. Sound. You can't hear anything. Nothing. It's just wild sound. It's just the sound, the microphone on the camera, mm -hmm. and people. There's all people telling jokes around a long table. You know, it's just a big family dinner type table. There's a bunch of college kids hanging out, telling jokes and stuff like that, and you can't hear a damn thing they say. She said, "Very good, Johnny. What's the word?" He said, "Fuck." <laughs> it's unfortunate because I feel like if we could hear the movie better. It would be a lot more enjoyable. You'd know what was happening. Right. But it's just, it's you, you struggle so much to even figure out what is trying to be presented in front of you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, shit, man. God damn it. You know, it's, it's just basically, it's a woods... Almost a cabin in the woods kind of thing, except it's like someone's house. Right. Some, you know, and then there's an axe murderer, and then people running around. 
there's there's a lot of uh, strange anomalies in this film. There's a a shot is I think accidentally repeated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and I don't know if that I don't know why that would have been on purpose. So I'm assuming it it just because it wasn't put in. funny. It wasn't funny. It no, was just it a was, shot of someone running away. Yeah. We'll probably show it in within within the within the show here. Sure. <laughs> Another thing that bothers me about the VHS cover here, <laughs> the tape itself is sweet. It's yellow. Oh, yeah. It says Axum on it. YP479 <laughs> York Entertainment. Cool tape. Box art, okay. Sure, for what it, what you think it's going to be. Bad Photoshop like logo. logo. Yeah. But the tagline <laughs> kills me. Uh, we'll do a close-up of this. It was supposed to be a weekend getaway until the horror began. That's not a proper sentence. It's still a mm -hmm. weekend getaway. It's just yeah. not going well for them. No, yeah, they're still getting away. They're still not home. Oh, yeah, they're on vacation. They're just getting killed. While on their away. While they're away. It, it's, in fact, maybe it's even more of a getaway. Because they gotta get away. <laughs> they gotta get away. They gotta get away. Look, it's gonna happen to the high woods. It's not the woods. I ain't going on no damn wood, man. What's wrong with you? Get up there. Right the hell here, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> So, Paul, mm -hmm. can we do a thing? Let's do a thing. What What do you got for me? Well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. These are B-movies we love. We're maniacs for B-movies. We sure are. That's what the show is all about. That is. So, for Axum, yeah. what does the B stand for in B-movies for you? I am glad that you asked me. Well, are you glad that I asked you? <laughs> Because it's the movie. I, I see what you did there. Nice. For me, the B in B movie in Axum mm -hmm. has got to be Bonehead. <laughs> because these filmmakers are just a bunch of boneheads. <laughs> there, a, lot, a lot of the shots are poorly executed, I will say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And just, it's the general feeling of, what did, what were these guys thinking? What a bunch of boneheads. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What about you? What's what's the B for you? For me, the B stands for baffling. Ah. Because for the same reasons, I am baffled that this movie was ever made. Yeah. Uh, it, was a, it was just a real chop job. Ah. Yeah, okay. But, no, it just... Uh, the, the How long did you come up with the puns? Prior to us shooting, the axe part was right then and there when I realized you didn't say it. Mm. And then the chop job was while you were giving your B explanation because I thought that would be funny. <laughs> we'll see about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this is the type of thing that, for as much as I've complained about it, mm -hmm. this is the type of movie that kind of epitomizes to me what this show is about. Oh, yeah. This is something that has a lot of flaws, obviously. Mm-hmm. But is quirky, is different, has some things going on in it that you're certainly not going to see in, like, you know, a regular Hollywood horror film. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is what B-movies or bad movies are all about. This goddammit been running after me all this damn time. I get this head once and for all. Damn, it's the time of day. Damn it. Got me all nervous here in the next minute. Oh, shit! Mike? Paul? A lot of things went wrong for the characters in the film Axum. Mm -hmm. If Lorenzo Lamas was in this movie, mm -hmm. 
What would Lorenzo do? Glad you asked that, Paul. Mm -hmm. I think what would have happened if, if true hero Lorenzo Lamas was in this film. American hero. He is an American hero. He would have rode it on his hog. Tassels a blazing in the wind. Oh yeah. And uh, probably just rode it right up, right up the steps to the house through the front door. Uh huh. And then pulled out a sawed-off shotgun and just shot the the axe guy. The undead, weird thing. Possibly undead axe guy. Yeah, I think it just shot him right, Boom. In, right in the just chest. Like that. Just that makes sense because there was a lot of some of the characters sort of just what would you call it? Ran away. They just sort of didn't. They they just sort of. Uh, you yeah, know. it was a lot of it was a lot of the bad guy shows up and everyone screams and runs and that's what it. Right. That was most of the movie. Right. How about you? You know what I think? What do you think would happen? man right back here would do? There he is. I think there, there were cars in the film that could have mm -hmm. been utilized sure. much more effectively. Lorenzo would have popped that hood, mm -hmm. did what he had to do, rewired some stuff, mm -hmm. and just got out of there. Oh, he would have left. Let's just go somewhere else. <laughs> to yeah. the beach or something. Yeah, why were they getting away to where they were getting away anyway? I don't know. It was dumb. But that's what Lorenzo would do. It's fun. It's fun to watch. It's fun to sit around and watch something like this and mm -hmm. just go, what is happening? Yeah. You know? I know. That's why we it. do the show. Mm-hmm. Ax him. <laughs> Rating system. Here on B Movie Mania, mm -hmm. we have a rating system that we sort of carry it over from your show, Drunk Movie Reviews. That was also your show. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go mm -hmm. one hand mm -hmm. and a thumb. It's hmm. a nice rating. Thank you. One and a thumb. I thought long and hard about it. What do you think? I am going to give it the double piece sign. Really? Double piece. Very nice. Because let's talk about the end <laughs> the end of this. The one thing that I will say about this movie, it has the greatest credits ending, not ending of the film, but mm -hmm. the greatest credits ending. Mm -hmm. I'll say it in movie history. Mm -hmm. It really I, does. I, I agree. I'm torn as to whether or not I want to give it away on the show. That's... Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's this. Yeah. <laughs> peace! <laughs> it just says peace. Peace. And mm -hmm. that's our review of Axum. Mm-hmm. Peace. And now let's throw it to our man on the street, Tim. Tim, what is going on out there on the streets? Mike, Paul, which one? What are we doing? Nobody, nobody said anything to me before I got in that cab. So, you know, I've been trying to call you guys, but no one's answering. I don't know if you're uh, busy filming or what, but somebody let me know. Paul? I am very excited about the second film. Oh, man. We watched this movie thinking it was going to be... I don't know about you, but I started... When we watched this movie, I thought it was going to be like some sort of kid's family movie. Yeah. It looks like that. The cover looks like that. The right. name of it looks like that. Right. But it turns out a movie, The Wizard of Space and Time... No. 
<laughs> speed. Oh, speed and time. The Wizard of Speed. It, you would think it would be space and it time. It would make sense they to be space and time. They kind of go together, usually. Yeah. Speed, and, speed time. and time. Yeah. Speed and time go very well together. Right. But it is not what it is. It is not geared towards a family audience, necessarily. In fact, I don't think it's geared towards any audience, apart from himself, the guy who made it. <laughs> yeah, it, that you, you nailed it right on the head. And that is what makes this movie so just confusing. Mm -hmm. Hi, all right, so so let's just <laughs> let's take it from the top here. Let's take it slow. Mm -hmm. I bought this movie at Farmore. Um, Great place for seven ninety nine. Did you? No. Okay. But at, at some point it was. It was seven ninety nine. It was on sale at Farmore for seven ninety nine. Okay. So how about this? Yeah. The plot is about a guy who's a special effects artist in the movies. And the thing is that in real life, in, mm -hmm. in reality, he is a, a special effects wizard, right? Yeah, yeah. He works in motion pictures. Mm -hmm. And so it's not much of a stretch in terms of his character. Yeah, because he did write, direct, and star in this movie. Yes, this, this is his dream project, <laughs> this basically. Is, I would even call it a statement. Big time. He has a real awe of just the cool little effects you can do. Um, his name is Mike Jitlov. Wow, they're finally calling! I'm coming, I'm coming, I got it, I got it! Hello, Dr. Magic? Is this Mike Jitlov? The, the theme that you find throughout the movie, well, there's two themes, I think. One of them is a very much a strong distaste for the Hollywood system. And how Absolutely. difficult it is for him, or I'm sure other people, to get anything done. You can tell, and that's really what makes, for me, this film so interesting. Mm -hmm. You can tell that he has been out in Los Angeles for a while, and he's been put through the system and put the, through the ringer. Mm -hmm. And he's gotten kind of bitter about it. Yes. And it comes through in the film mm -hmm. in a real weird way. The studio hires the next man on the roster. Well, how do I get on the roster? You have to be in the union. Well, how do I get in the union? When you're on the roster. You mean I can't join unless I'm already a member? That's correct. Then you need 30 consecutive days camera operation, a complete physical exam, the producer sends a letter, and you pay your fees. Well, fine. I've done 10 years of camera work. Then you've worked in violation of seniority. You'll have to start all over as a film voter. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, there's your standard Hollywood joke, cliche even, if you will, where, like, don't touch that, it's a union job kind of a thing, right? Right. But, like, it takes that and it just multiplies it and, like, exponentializes it by in baffling amounts. So, like, if you're, if you are, like, a, a ten-year-old kid trying to watch this movie and there's all this talk in there about, like, how the unions, I mean, it's just, it, it would go over oh, yeah. so many people's heads. Yeah, they don't understand any of it. So why would you put why would you put that in a movie? I think he just had a strong feeling for it. Yeah. Can I help you? Yes, how do I join the director's union? You'll have to be in a copy of the deal memo by your studio producer before you can pay an initiation fee and be cleared by union counsel. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, what is the initiation fee? $7,000 with a $100 application fee, $200 every quarter and 10% of your salary. $7,000, what is that for? That's the amount you pay to get into our union. But what is it, like Social Security? I get it back when I retire? Absolutely not! Don't get me wrong. I think that there is some really interesting, really well done things about this movie. Oh, absolutely. It is from a technical standpoint pretty incredible sure you can you can tell that he put a lot of yeah. a lot of TLC in it it was a lot of stop motion special effects type mm -hmm. stuff he did I am the wizard of speed and time the world of film is where I shine I've got magic to let you see just where you were and want to be on imagination silver screen the other theme throughout the movie was weird. He couldn't, anytime he interacted or got close to a person, <laughs> it, there would be like weird, like electrical sparks, like bad sparks. <laughs> oh. 
wasn't there something where he like tried to t- touch a doorknob? Yeah, or like something? yeah, like shocking, and it was it, it was weird. There was like a business card that was like all weird. May I help you? Yes, I have an appointment with Mr. Straker. Thank Mr. you. Catch! Oh, come on! Bye, Mike. Have a good time. See you around, Speedy. Goodbye. That all comes to fruition when the romantic interest like gives him this little heart necklace or something, or does he give it to her? And then then he's able to like feel connection and love or something. It's really weird. Yeah. Are movies the only way you can touch people? They're the safest way. With that weird subplot going on, what do you think was the implication? Was there something where like he was? I mean, because there was electricity coming out of his fingers. Yeah. So was he like? an alien or something or he was trying to write some sort of like deep theme like right. it was supposed to be symbolic I don't sure. think he was an alien or anything like that I think it was just supposed to symbolize that <laughs> he, he can't connect with electricity I don't know so was he try- was it his way of saying that because he's in the movie industry his relationships have suffered <laughs> I think kind of that's what it is I think he's found himself not being able to connect with people. There you are. Come on, we're ready to go. Excuse me, Sydney, I gotta get back to work. Good timing, Brian. Oh, great. Thank you, Brian. What a pal, Brian. That show sure is. Pow. <laughs> the, the climax of the movie is he gets a spot trying to do a segment for some studios doing a, a celebration of the history of special effects. We're doing a TV special using footage from the biggest effects movies ever made. We're gonna spotlight the real wizards of Hollywood, the ones who actually give our films their magic. Right. So it's like so obvious, like, but then he, so he gets a chance to do it, and they just want, we just need a quick whatever for it, and he's going all out on this thing. There's a wizard of speed and time stepping out by the Hollywood scientist singing the joy and love he's found and bring it all to movie town. But, my, but what Mike doesn't know is that there's a $25,000 side bet that he won't deliver. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll bet you my salary for the entire show. 25000 bucks. 25000 bucks. What's that? What did you say? $25,000? I feel bad because, like, he put so much work into this movie. Yeah. It, it, it's just something that I would have a, a hard time believing that a lot of people could connect to. Yes. And you're right. There's no real mention about, like, who this movie is for. There's no... There's no this is a family film, or like... Mm-hmm. It's just... It's just, here it is. Here's I wouldn't my be thing. surprised if those are just on his website. Like, you can just go and still pick up a VHS copy of that. <laughs> Like, maybe. Well, if you want to, go to... It's not on it's here. Not on it's not on there. I think I Googled him or it. something, yeah. Um, well, that being said... Yeah. Paul. Yeah. What does the B in this B movie stand for you? I didn't come up with an answer. Can I look at the back for a second? Yeah. Okay. Would you like... Do you have something? I have one. You go first. Do you want to ask me then? <laughs> no. Okay. How about you go first and then I'll okay. figure something out. Alright. You go first. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> For me, yeah. the B in this B movie is bonkers. Because this movie was bonkers. There was a whole special effects scene where he's sitting on a suitcase and he just goes down all these hills, like yeah. riding down these hills and like goes under a semi truck mm-hmm. and it's nuts. It is. It's just absolutely, and I don't even remember how much sense it made in the movie. Like it was just kind of a funny gag almost, I right. think. So much of the movie was just here's some cool stuff. Yeah, because that's his 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 thing. You know, mm-hmm. um, the B in B movie for this movie, The Wizard of Speed and Time, for me, was 
Betsy Sherman of the Boston Globe, mm -hmm. who is quoted on the back of the VHS tape here. And she says, The Wizard of Speed and Time is an exciting and heartfelt movie about the compulsion to make movies. And that actually sums it up pretty well. Yeah. It really is about this guy's compulsion to make movies. It's his love for special effects, his mm -hmm. love for making movies. Mm -hmm. And he's really pouring his heart into this yeah, film. There is a lot of heart. His heart's going right here. Into right the into the case. Mm. I would give The Wizard of Speed and Time a rating of four and four. But the thumbs will come together and touch and connect. <laughs> Is that two hands? That's Not, four and four. That's with a, a, right. it's, a, it's a four and four with a bridge in between. Right. They can pass between. Because two hands is the best. Two hands is the best. No, I'm sorry. I take that back. Oh. On Drunk Movie Reviews one time, you gave a movie two hands and ten fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Hard Ticket to Hawaii? Whatever. It doesn't I matter. I don't know. I want to give The Wizard of Speed and Time. I want to I wanna give it. I want to. I want to give. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it four fingers mm -hmm. and an A OK. Nice. Yeah. Cause he's okay in my book. Yeah. You know. What would be, you know. What would be cool mm -hmm. if he like animated your hands so they'd be like, Hey, how's it going? And the other one's like, Pew pew pew. He probably would. Yeah, he's pretty sweet. If you're watching, Mike, and you see this. G g feel free. Do a little something with this right here. Mm-hmm. Be pretty cool. Yeah. And <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this episode of B Movie Mania. Uh, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com backslash B Movie Mania. Find us on YouTube, obviously, B Movie Mania. Check us out. We like you. We want you to like us. I, I've been my case. And I have been and hope to continue to be Paul Brooks. Thanks for watching. And join us next time for B Movie Mania! Mania!